There's a difference when you see a child when they laugh. Yeah. When you hear a happy laugh, you know the difference. You, are, you can tell a sad laugh and the history of a child by how withdrawn they are, how they act around with all of this or the day or the toys and stuff and how they act. Mm -hmm. And they're here, ha ha, real happiness. Happiness, that's, you know, to some people, man, they done paid a, a lot of price just to get that, to be able to laugh, a full laugh, you know? Instead of ha 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 ha. You ever seen somebody ha? Yeah. You say, oh, what's wrong? Oh, he acting as if. Oh, if you, you know, what's the matter, man? What's going on? Sooner or later, they started letting you know. But a lot of this is real. You can see it in their face to relax. A lot of them is relaxed. There was no relaxing before. You was always like this or else you wasn't here. Yeah. You, this wasn't here, number one, so the open space and wasn't what it was, it was, you know, real tough, man. My name is Charles Kiss. Charles, Steve K. And I'm just um, some classmates and I are just doing a short documentary on Katona Park, and we just we, we wanted to ask you a few questions. My first question is, what major changes has the park experienced in the last 60 years? Uh, I I think I have seen a, a whole lot of unity, a whole lot of concern, and a whole lot of people just not taking it. No more. 1982, that's when I got involved. I got sick, and that made me stay home for about two months from off of my job. And a person like me, I have to be doing something. So I had came outside, and it was like my eyes really, really looked and said, yo, and I, yo, and I looked around on the other side. I never forget, I was on the other side, and I was just looking around. And I looked at the daycare, the windows was closed, the shades was down, and I just looked, and I couldn't see nothing but weeds and trees, and where the people at, where the people? You know, and then that's when I knew something had to be, be done to way. get involved. Okay. Monterey Daycare, right there. And you see it's right across the street, and they, it wasn't even allowed because of the fear of the different things that was, was happening over in there. That's where I, I was right on that gate, right there, in yeah. between there. I took a walk because I, like I said, I just came out the hospital, and I just stopped right there, just looked around. So, oh my God! Around, it's a lot of history here, a lot of history. Go way, way, way back, where people abandoned it. Once they thought that a lot, because back then a lot of drugs and a lot of robbery and murders and everything quite naturally made everybody afraid. Oh. I would say 30 something years ago, going way back then, a little further than that, because I got involved by 82. I used to live around here and hang around here, and you had to bring baseball bats and everything to play football right across. Then the military had to come in, clean, clean out the surrounding neighborhoods. The police, forget it, 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 they didn't need, you know, they wasn't doing too much of nothing. They brought in National Guards. And, 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 and people were scared to walk. Bodies and everything found all around. Drugs and robbery and rapes and the whole nine. A lot of years, and, uh, and uh, I'll never forget how people was packing up and leaving, packing up and leaving. The ones that stayed was afraid, got whipped up a couple of times, cars blowed up. Uh, this is for real, shot at and the whole nine because you stood your grounds. You already was enslaved, man. I'm not going to work every day and come back and can't get in my own house, my own building. Wow. Smell it. Don't it smell different? It smells great. It yeah. didn't smell good before? Nope. <laughs> nope. Or else the fact that you really didn't have time to notice what it really smelled like or what it looked like. Because you were so busy doing like this, looking around and you were moving fast. Before you didn't smell nothing but death trouble, aggravation. So everybody in the community came out and started to turn down the weeds and everything? No, 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 the Parks Department, but everybody started, all the petitions and different things that we had, a lot of meetings and whatnot about working together in unity and, and having some type of pride and, and waking up. And, and you know, because remember, when you look at the neighborhoods that you have 
around you, there's a lot of shelter, a lot of welfare, senior citizens, you know, living on low income or else no income. And you got these kind of like poor people. And putting them all in one place without being able to give them the recreation, the education, the counseling, the job training. You'd have a chaos if it wouldn't be about having something yeah. that they can do. Yeah. And a lot of it is not, even though it's offered with all of the recreation and education, sometimes you just sit on a rock and just sit and chill, read a book or to do your homework. Yeah. That whole peace of mind in your space, you just go out and drift out yeah. there, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you got to understand it, man. And everybody's struggling towards the same goal, man. Just to live in peace and harmony. This is one step closer. Yeah, this is one step closer, correct. And the more that they start to see it, the more that the people start believing that there is a better way. And you just have to be patient and stick, stick, stick to the grindstone about what you believe on. And don't never give it up. Some of the mothers and fathers or else the grandparents tell the history yeah. to their children. You know, like, oh, 50 years ago, I remember when we came around, oh, we had to get out of here, you know, because it started turning. Oh, and then when they come back, they be so surprised. Yeah. Because they know what they left. And to come yeah, back, come back and come back to yeah. the same, you see what I'm saying? And it's, it's created all here. From all this section in, right in here, we started from my hallway right there. We started a little thing because kids didn't even have where everybody else go trick-or-treating and, yeah. and Easter hunts and all of them holidays like that that a kid should enjoy. There was none there. There was none there. Half of them remember again what I said, a lot of treatment around in here. Families with different uh, 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 drug abuse or alcohol. You know, some mental because of the fact of separation, battered woman, and different things, you know. So it was like whatever they had, it was a breeze through if they had that. And we created little different things. And it ran from in the hallway to we finally had it big enough and with the connections and, 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 and uh, how we say outreaching one another start applying for the permits and with the relationship and working together and donating and tripping. Now we give them some scholarships. Wow. You know, they go on out and, and, and supply different schools with different things, whatever assistance they can. The Nature Center, as you see about the education in downtown and constantly trying to inform all of us, yeah. all of us. You know, the beauty of your trees, the beauty of your nature, your hood as some people want to call it. Yeah. You understand? The hood. <laughs> the hood. You know, but remember, people destroy the hood. Yeah. Other people build it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And as long as you believe in, I keep on saying it, and believing in that, that alone in itself, you might have one, you might have two. That two bring you four sincere and dedicated people, yeah. you know? and they to be the one to latch on to somebody who got the thousands. All you need is somebody to listen to you one time and be able to work hard for what you believe. We all join forces and say, what is wrong? What can we do instead of pointing fingers? Yeah. And as the people got involved and the, the Parks Department really see that other people was getting involved in their own community, then we all sat down. There was no pointing fingers here, there, there. We came. What can we do to correct this situation? Yeah. Um, without Daytona Park, how do you think, what would you think the neighborhood would be like? How, okay, okay. Yeah, what's your, how do you think this affects the neighborhood? Okay, okay. To be honest with you, I really don't okay. think that okay. it would be okay. as uh, okay. 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 Again, okay. not so okay. much as just okay. because of the fact that it's supposed to hold okay. a lot of okay. stress and strain to everyday life. Okay. Not having the money to feed the kids, not having the money for the bill, the landlord, this and that. Uh, you need some type of outlet. You need some type of peace and quietness. And, and, and when you come to the park, sometime in the morning, the afternoon, or even in the evening, there's a, a comfort that you get. Like all of it just drains on out. And then when you see the trees and the flowers and different things, you know, I think it 
maintain the middle stages of your anger and craziness to calm down, put it to the side that tomorrow is a better day. Let me enjoy what I see. It's nowhere at 100 degrees that these kids have to be enslaved and in, in, in fear. It's no way. Right, and there's so much stress yeah. that's beyond it. You know, and for some of the younger, it's not just the everyday stress of school and, you know, going home. If you got a little brother, you got to help look out for your brother. But the stress of getting caught up in these gangs and different things. You know, and this is what we try to bring in, you know, because all surrounded, it's just not all about basketball. It's about education. It's about counseling. It's about sharing uh, information, resources, outreaching. You know, if a kid got a problem, I'll make a full phone call to a friend of mine that I know who runs a, a, a business or, or so whatever it, the problem might be. We're going to have all kind of recreation, bring out the mobile bill again, parks department, yeah. through their community service. You know, they come down, they bring the skates, they bring the painting, arts, craft, uh, book story, reading to these kids, you know, educating them, yeah. you know, and... and and under a safe environment, yeah. a safe environment. And you try to instill that in them, man. Respect everybody, even as they growing up at these kid age. Because when they grow up, they respect no color. There's yeah. no color barrel. We all the same. Everybody's entitled to that. And that's all we try to do. Yeah. I've been doing it for so long till my whole body ache. But I don't quit. Yeah. I don't quit. Because I come from all of this. Yeah. But without these kind of daycares, and, and recreation center, where would these kids go yeah. if this park wasn't here and halfway look at where people looking out for it? Yeah. You have all the gangs all in here, you know the drill. Yeah, you have all kind of craziness, you see? Yeah. And all they want to do is just enjoy. Because school getting ready to come out. When June, matter of fact, really late May, people start drifting. They don't go back in, all the way to the 24th or whatever it is start drifting in the streets, drifting in the street. Yeah. If you don't have something for them to get involved with, you have a riot on your hands. You have a riot. The peace and the harmony, looking at the kids, that's what the whole struggle is about. And keep on fighting and asking different people to keep on helping and protect the park. Our organization, which is Katona Park North Volunteer slash Future Youth, also other different organizations that I sit on. But this was the one that I created around me along with some other people and my, my wife co-founded. Uh, we started here and branched out all over for everybody. Everybody. Across town, whether it's the 79th, 65th district, whatever district it is, because I believe in this. Everybody, no matter where you live at, you're all the same. Yeah. If I can help you, I help you. I ask you to pass it on to somebody else that you can help. For all people, for all people. For all people uh, you'd be surprised how many, even outside of Afro-American, that have been suffering and going through the same thing. It's just that they not recorded as much as, as we as Afro-Americans. You know, uh, we focus again, send it all ages, from little kids to senior citizens, black, white, green, orange, we all in the same boat, and all have been, you know, it's just again, some is just more out than the others, hey, how you doing, bro? All right. Some is just more out than the others as far as, you know, knowing statistics, you know, and knowing, all right? So that's 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 uh, basically about it, and I and I and and before I before I do pass on or whichever it might whichever come first, uh, I would like to see that everybody do the same what we tried to do, you know. All you try to do is just make it safe and comfortable for everybody, and just pass it on. You know what I mean? And everybody should get into gear. This way, you can teach yours. She can teach hers. This one could teach that one, and then you're all gonna meet in the same parade.